Good morning. TGIF, happy Friday. Hey, Daniela, good morning. God bless you. It's great to see you. <clears throat> good morning, Sister Suze. God bless you. Hey, Sister Cynthia, good morning. I'm glad you made it. I pray um, that all is well with your husband. Sister Veronica, good morning, beautiful woman of God. Hey, Sister Kitty, good morning. God bless you. Yes, good morning. Amen. Hey, Stephanie, good morning. It's great to see you. That's right. Happy Friday, TGIF. I'm excited. I don't know about you, but it's Friday, y'all. What they say, Friday? It's Friday. I'm I'm excited. I just I love Friday. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Yeah, it's awesome to see you all saying good morning to our family, our our um, encouragement and prayer family. Hey, Deanna, good morning. Hey, Jeanette, good morning to you. Happy Friday. Hey, Bridget, good morning. Good morning. God bless you as well. Do me a favor. Don't forget to click share as you're coming on. And I'm just getting, I'm going to jump right in. I'm excited. I missed you all yesterday. Thank you for those of you who contacted me. You always contact me and let me know that you, you know, that you miss me, but that you, you know, hope that I take the day and I rest. And, um, you know, when I miss, it's typically because of work. You know, I have a, a, a conflict with my work schedule and, and that comes first, y'all, because that's the, that's the bread and butter. Somebody say bread and butter. So, um, so there are times when, you know, um, the schedule conflicts and I'm not able to make it. And so, but I try to be here at least four days out of five. So, um, hey, Sister Donna. Hey, Sister Kelly. Good morning. Hey, Sister Sally. You're here. Praise God. Shakola, good morning. I think you might be new, Shakola. I've never seen your name before. That is a beautiful name. Praise God. Family, let's welcome Shakola. Say, welcome to Shakola. God bless you. We're so glad you're here with us. Praise God. It's awesome to see you. God bless you. Hey, Teresa, good morning. Good morning. It's awesome to see you. Yes, we made it. Sister Donna, we made it. You better say that thing. Hey, Sister Linda, it's great to see you. Good morning. Hey, Toya, Toya, good morning. Happy Friday. Toya, we made it. Amen. <laughs> good morning, Sister Vaughn. God bless you. It's great to see you. Sister Edna, you made it. Praise God. Thank you so much for y'all coming on. Uh-huh. Did you say keep my grind? I know, right? So I'm going to go ahead and y'all are just blessing me this morning. This is so awesome to end the week with you all. I can't think of anybody else that I want to end the week with, but you, my encouragement and prayer family, you all are so special to me and you all really just bless my soul. You lift me up. Um, you know, Daniela, you often say that, you know, you wake up and look forward to this time together and it kind of gives you a reason to wake up and it excites you. Guess what? Being with you all does the same thing for me. I get up and, you know, some mornings I don't always get up and, and hey, Sister Coretta, good morning. And I don't always just wake up just like, you know, ready to face the day. But I do thank God. Um, that when I think about you all and I think about fellowshipping with you and I think about, I want to say seeing your faces, I don't, I see your, your profile pictures, um, but being with you is equally as important to me. It lifts my spirit. It blesses my soul as well. So thank you all for being a blessing to me. Amen. I, I do believe that the Lord is going to speak powerfully this morning. So if you're thinking of anybody, if anybody comes to mind that you say, hey, this person can really, you know, use a, a boost in their spirits. This person can really use a word of encouragement. Tag them, you know, put their uh, put their name in 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 the chat and tag them and say, hey, come join us. We we are receiving a powerful word from God this morning to just kind of finish out our week strong because that's what we always say, right? Good morning, Sister Rebecca. God bless you, and we're looking to finish strong. Um, the week may not look like we're going to finish strong, but as long as you made it to Friday, beloved, I'm here to tell you, you have done that thing. You have overcome. You have finished. You have, you know, God is good. You made it. That's what we always say. We made it. So you made it. I made it. 
and praise and glory be to God. So Father God, right now, we just give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. We just thank you for this time, um, you know, together, the, this opportunity to hear from your heart, to hear what you have to say. You know, some of us show up weary and tired, and, and so we come for a refreshing. We come for a renewing. Some of us show up with questions, and so we come seeking answers from you the one who holds the answer. Some of us come just needing prayer and then needing the fellowship and needing the encouragement and needing to just be around other believers. And so we thank you, God, for you setting this platform and this atmosphere to be such a place of love. I thank you for the love that's on this live every morning for the sisterhood and the brotherhood and, and, and just the sense of family. We thank you, God, that you know, this is a judgment-free zone. We don't judge each other. We love each other. We encourage each other. Yes, the word may challenge us, but I thank you for the humility and the honesty of all of us that when we, when that word convicts us, we say, oh God, that, that was me. That was for me. Forgive me. You know, I repent. And we thank you, God, for being that loving God. We thank you for being that forgiving God, that merciful God, that gracious God, that allows us to turn things around as we recognize when we're heading in the wrong direction. So Father God, we're just ready to receive your word today. You know, correct if there needs to be correction, realign if there needs to be realignment, encourage, lift up, refresh, revive, renew, refire. Just do what only you can do this morning. We are ready, we are excited. And so we just say, speak Holy Spirit, have your way today. In Jesus' name, amen, and amen, amen, amen. Praise God. God is so good. Hey, Sister Clarice, good morning. I'm glad you're excited, Sister Coretta. Amen. I am excited, too. And um, we are going to be in the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 7, Deuteronomy 7, Six Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 in the message translation. If somebody will put that up there for me, I would greatly appreciate it. I just thank God that his word is alive. His word is living. You know, I think it was you, Sister Donna, that you put up there, you know, that this is, this is like our little church online where we keep it real. And I thank you all for keeping it real with me. You, you know, I, I can't, I've told you, you guys already, you ladies, hey, Sister Lucy, okay, and praise God. Sister Lucy says she's ready for a pep talk from her daddy. Come on now. I, yeah, pep talks are good. Um, but uh, Sister Donna said, you know, hey, Sister Sandy, good morning, you know, that we keep it real. And we listen, we cannot uh, afford to, hey, Sister J, God bless you. Hey, Tarawana, hey, it's good to see you. God bless you. Sister Evelyn, God bless you, beloved. It's good to see you. I pray all is well with you over there in Texas. Um, you know, we cannot afford, I'm allergic to faith. Let me just say that. And so, um, you know, I've learned, good morning, Sister Ruth, you made it. I have learned that um, faith is not going to get us where we need to go. Uh, not being real, not being honest with ourselves is just going to keep us stuck. Um, and so we've got to keep it real. God keeps it real with us. So we got to keep it real with ourselves. We got to keep it real with each other, you know, but in keeping it real, we cannot uh, do that void of love. You know, everything that I share and everything that the Holy Spirit leads me to speak, I always want to uh, communicate it with love uh, because I believe that sometimes that's sometimes that's the missing ingredient in our relationship with each other. Today, we come with a lot of judgment. You know, we we come uh, with harsh words. We come with correction. Good morning, Lee. God bless you. We come with a lot of things that's of us. But if we are going to come in the name of Jesus, we are going to come with love. And, and yes, and love does come with correction. But listen, when I know you love me, I can easily, I can better receive what you have to say to me. You know, people can tell when you're not coming at them in love. People can tell when we're being judgmental. People can tell when we, they feel like you're looking down on them. People can tell. Don't get it twisted. I can tell when somebody is, is speaking a word of correction to me in love versus when, you know, they're, they're trying to tell me I don't know what I'm doing or they're trying to make me feel like they're better than me or they're trying to be God and condemn me and do God's job and, 
and, and cause conviction. That's not our job, y'all. Let's stay in our lane. You understand what I'm saying? We we the, the Bible says that they people will know that we belong to, that we're a part of his family, that we are walking with Christ. They will know us because of our love. And so that's what we want is to be loving toward people. So I say that because y'all know sometimes I get all passionate, you know, and and um you know, and I've heard it said before, right, that if I'm not smiling, um, that I look like, hey Jennifer, um, that I look like I'm I'm like I'm upset, right? You know, and, and I can't I can get that real serious face going. So I have to be intentional about smiling so that you all know that whatever I'm saying, I'm not upset, I'm I'm just passionate, I'm excited about God doing what only God can do. So anything that I say ever to you, even if it's a tough message, a tough love, just know I always want to come from a place of love. I don't, I may not have met, good morning, Regina, good morning, Sister Sally. I may not know you all personally, but you are my sisters in the Lord. You are my brothers in the Lord. I love you. My whole desire is to see you walk in the fullness of what God has for you. My desire is for you to walk in your purpose. My desire is for you to be your best self. Amen. Because at this point, at 52 years old, y'all, that's all I want. It's just my best life. I just I just want my best self to come forth. And sometimes in order to, to live, be my best self, I got to look at what's trying to uh, what's trying to diminish that, what's trying to interrupt that, what's trying to take away from that. Amen. And so that, those are the things that we talk about here, um, you know, every single morning. So this morning we're in Deuteronomy 7, 6 and hear the word of the Lord. This is so powerful. I love the word. Anybody out there that you love the word? I just love the word of God. I love how it's clear, how it's concise. You know, I love that it's direct. I love that it, it's not, it's not complex. If we feel like it's complex, it's because we, we're making it more difficult than it has to be. The word is the word. It's simple. It's, 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 it is what it is. So it's either we're going to believe it or we're not. It's either we're going to do it or we're not. Amen. And so the word is the word is the word. So Deuteronomy 7, 6. Yes, that's right. I, I love it. That's why, Sister Donna, we can just be ourselves and I can't. Listen, y'all, I've tried being some other things and some other people, and guess what? It don't it don't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't fit me. You know, it's like putting on clothes that's too tight or too big or whatever. It just doesn't fit. So I got to do me, amen, and I want y'all to do you, amen, amen. Yo, uh, praise God, Sister Kitty. I appreciate that. That's right. You're grateful for the word. I'm grateful for the word, too. So here's the word of God. Uh, here's what it says, verse 6. 7, 6 says, do this because you are a people set apart as holy to God, your God. God, your God chose you. Say, I am chosen. Your God chose you out of all the people on earth. I like that because how many of y'all know there's a lot of folk on earth, y'all? It says, your God chose you out of all the people on the earth for himself. So don't get it twisted now. God, the Bible tells us God is a jealous God. Uh-huh, God chose you for him. He didn't chose you for you. He didn't, cho he, didn't uh, he didn't choose you for your crew. He didn't choose you for your boo. He chose you for him. And it says that God chose you out of all the people on earth for himself as a cherished personal treasure. Ooh, I like that. God say it's personal. You are chosen and it is personal. You know, there are a lot of things, y'all, a lot of things that we like to take and make personal. But this morning, we're gonna, we're gonna make it personal in a positive way. We're gonna, this message is personally for you this morning. God says, I chose you. You are chosen. It's not a mistake. And God said, I chose you. It ain't like I just had two people to choose from. God said, I searched the whole earth. I, I had a lot of people, you know, this ain't, this ain't like a, um, you know, years and years ago, I was in a, um, I was in a pageant, a beauty pageant, right? And it was 50 of us because we were all representing the states, right? 
and I represented New York. And I remember, you know, going there and I thought, man, there are 49 other women here. And when you're in that kind of competition, uh, you feel like you really have no cho uh, no 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 real opportunity to be chosen. You know, you kind of start looking and comparing yourself and you kind of start looking and seeing, oh, she's got a nice shape. Oh, she's got a beautiful face. All oh, that hair, is, you know, and they start looking. And But I just thank God that you don't have to compare yourself to nobody else today because the Bible just said that out of all the people on the earth, so yes, beloved, God saw all the other women that in your mind, you may not, you know, you may not, uh, when you compare yourself, you may not live up to you. You may not feel like you're doing the great things that they're doing. You may not feel like you have the same gifts or you may not feel like you're as powerful, but can I tell you something this morning? God sure thought you were because he looked at everybody. He looked at everybody in the whole earth. And the Bible says that out of all the people, somebody say that with me, out of all the people, he chose me. Come on, out of all the people, he chose you out of all. And, and that really, really, that's right, chosen and handpicked. See, I like that because for some of us, hmm, this is not where, help me, Holy Ghost, for some of us, when we uh, you know, are in families that have been, there's been a lot of generational curses and a lot of suppression and oppression and depression and all those pressions, right? And, and, and we live in that kind of family and we grow up in dysfunction and we grow up, maybe even told we'll never amount to anything. And we grow up, you know, uh, in the box, you understand, where, uh, you know, nobody from our family ever did this. Nobody from our family ever graduated high school. Nobody from our family ever got a degree. Nobody from our family ever went there. And we grow up with that kind of mindset. This scripture says <laughs> that regardless of who did it or who didn't do it in your family, God chose you. I love that. I absolutely love that. And here's the beautiful thing. You know, it, we say, wow, God, so you chose me. What did you choose me for? Well, it is my prayer that you are diligently getting yourself before God and seeking the answer to that question, because I can tell you right now, I'm looking at some of you right now that he's chosen you to write a book. He's chosen you to start a ministry. He has chosen you to open a business. You understand what I'm saying? He has chosen, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. He has chosen you to go back to school and get that master's, get that bachelor's. Come on, somebody, he has chosen you. He has chosen you to break the gener generational curses of addiction and alcoholism in your family. He has chosen you to break that cycle of divorce. I'm talking to somebody this morning. Yes, God chose you. He could have chosen anybody else. He could have chosen anybody else not in your family. He could have chosen anybody else in your family, but guess what he did? He chose you. I pray you understand how important and how special and how amazing it is to know that out of all the people, God chose you. And can I tell you something? He didn't choose you because you were so special in, in a, of yourself. He chose you because of what he placed in you. And can I tell you that when God places something powerful in us, it's only a matter of time that he's going to come back knocking, knock, knock, knock. I put this potential in you. I put this gift in you. And he's going to come knocking and he's going to, he, there's come a time he's going to come for a return on the investment. Somebody say a return on the investment. Whatever God placed in you, whatever he chose you to do, there's going to come a time and it, the time is now. Some of you right now, you are experiencing that where God is, he's calling for you to go to the next level. He's calling for you to step out and stop hiding. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Some of you, you've been hiding. Some of you, you've been downplaying yourself. Some of you, you've been so comfortable being behind behind the scenes, but can I tell you, God's about to pull back that curtain, somebody. Oh, help me, Lord Jesus. I, I'm trying to minister this word, but I'm feeling like the prophetic is coming on me because I, I just sense that there is somebody that you've gotten so used to being in the backdrop and being behind the scenes, and, and you, you, have, you have allowed that to cause you to stay hidden, but I'm coming to tell you right now that even though uh, 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 the people may not put you in the lineup like they didn't put David um, in the lineup, that God has still chosen you, and it's just a matter of time that God is going to call for you, and when he calls for you, can nobody else, 
can nobody else do what you do. Nobody else can say it the way you can say it. Nobody else can bring it the way you're going to bring it. Nobody else. Come on, somebody. And I'm just telling you, it's your, your time to shine is now. And God is, listen, I'm not telling you to go out there and make it happen. I'm just telling you to get into position. I'm just telling you to get ready. I'm just telling you to, 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 to just stay humble and, and, and just get ready for what God is about to do because he has been cultivating you in private. Oh, I'm trying to um, help me, Holy Ghost. He's been cultivating you. He's been preparing you in private. And that's why it's been so, so, you know, you, you felt so alone. You felt so isolated. You felt like people just didn't understand. And, and you've kind of been doing this thing just by yourself. But can I tell you something? What God has been doing in private is now about to be pushed to the forefront publicly, but it's not your own doing. If this is what God is about to do. <laughs> And that's awesome, Sister Ruth. You know, some of us are, uh, you know, called if seasons of being behind the scenes. You understand? It's awesome to be behind the scenes because being behind the scenes means that you help to make things happen, but you're not necessarily looking for the glory. But can I tell you something? That being on the for being pushed to the front doesn't doesn't mean that you start getting glory, okay? So let's get this settled in our mind. When I say God is pushing you to the forefront, it's not about you. It's about him. So don't be afraid to be pushed to the forefront for God. God is not pushing you to the forefront uh, to, to make you great. He's pushing you to the forefront to make himself great. Can I say that again? Because see, that's where some of us get all tripped up. Yeah, he didn't promote you for your name to be great. He promoted you for his name to be great. He didn't give you the gifts so that you can be great. He gave you the gifts so that his greatness can be seen through you. He's lifting you up so that people will be drawn to what they see in you, but ultimately they'll be drawn to him. Anybody flowing with me this morning? So all I'm saying is don't be afraid of being pushed forward. Don't be afraid of being given a platform. Don't be afraid of if he's pulling back the curtain and saying, there she is. She's been hiding all these years, but now I'm making a way to push her to the front. Don't get it twisted. He's not pushing us to the front for us to do our thing. He's pushing us to the front for us to do his thing. Am I making this thing plain? So let me try and go back to this scripture. Um, maybe that's not where God wants me this morning, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to go back. So we're in Deuteronomy 7, 6, and here is what it says. It says that God chose you. He chose you, that it's personal. He chose you as his cherished. Now listen, the thing is, is a lot of times we are looking to be chosen and cherished by people. But here's what God is saying. No, keep your focus on me. I'm the one that chose you. I'm the one that's cherishing you. I'm You are my personal treasure. Some of us, we get in trouble because we're fighting so hard to be the personal treasure of another person. We're trying to be the personal treasure of our spouse, of our boo. You have our bay, you understand all that stuff. You know, we're, we're trying, we're trying to be the personal treasure of our children. Help me, Holy Ghost. Some of us place our children on on uh, and worship them. You know, we 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 lift them up to a place. Can I tell you that there's only one person that we are the, his personal treasure, and that is God. Now, here's what the 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 scripture started out. He says, "Do this." Because you are a people set apart as holy to God. When you go back and you read it, the reason why is because he told them that he was, this is, he's talking to his chosen people, the Israelites, but it applies to you and I. He says, I'm bringing you into the country that I promised you. <laughs> God says, listen, whatever I spoke to you, whatever I promised you, I did it again. I got to get my power source, but I'm going to keep talking. God said, whatever I promised you, whatever I told you I was going to do, whatever I said that I was going to bring to pass, God says, I'm getting ready to do it. I'm getting ready to do it. And that's what he told the Israelites. He said, I'm getting ready to do it. But here's what he also said. I need you to recognize a few things. These, this is in the verses just before what I'm reading to you, before verse 7. 
He said, I'm getting ready to bring you into what I promised you. I'm getting ready to deliver you. I'm getting ready to promote you. I'm getting ready to move you into this next season. I'm getting ready to do this thing. I'm getting ready to, 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 to deliver what I told you. I'm getting ready to bring you into the blessings. I'm getting ready to bring you to this place. He said, but there are some things that you need to do. He said, understand that when I bring you to this place, you cannot, you cannot allow, he said, the superpowers, the, the ones that, that were here before you, the ones that would look to want to intimidate you, the, the ones that would want to try to drive you out of this blessing, the ones that would want to try to talk you out of this blessing. He said, you cannot allow them to come back in. And listen, when I think about the superpowers, I think about the spirit of fear. I think about of pride. I think about uh, discouragement. I think about depression. I think about those things that would want to talk you out of the blessing. Help me, Holy Ghost. You understand, Gus, is I'm, 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 I'm getting ready to um, bring you into this blessing to deliver you. He said, don't superpowers to talk you out of your blessing. Don't allow the superpowers to, to, to intimidate you and tell you that you're not worthy. Don't allow that. And he says, clear it all out. He said, clear out all fear. Clear out all doubt. Clear out all this discouragement, that, that low self-esteem and low self-worth. He said, clear out all of that. He said, and then he says, and don't intermingle. <laughs> he says, don't intermingle with them. He's talking about don't intermingle with people that are not recognizing that you are set apart. Don't intermingle with people that are not going to honor the fact that God chose you. Don't intermingle people that are going to try to pull you back. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the Egyptians. That when It says, God, when God freed you, it says, don't go back to slavery. Don't intermingle. Don't, don't be hanging out with them in Facebook and inboxing. and Don't be texting them and don't be calling them and don't intermingle with people that will cause you to go back to slavery. Don't don't stay connected to people who are not going to celebrate your freedom. There are some people that actually liked it when you were a slave. So God said, don't go back to slavery. Don't reconnect. Don't compromise. Don't entertain things that I have pulled you out of and that I have set you apart from. Am I talking to anybody this morning? So after he said all of that, he said, you need, to, you need to get rid of all the superpowers that used to once have a hold on you that used to intimidate you. He said, you need to get rid of all of that. And then he says, and, and don't, don't, don't find yourself you know, back connected with anything that's going to pull you out of the place that I am elevating you to, that I'm taking you to, to the, to the blessings I'm giving you. And he says, when you do all of this, then you, you, know, then you are really... You do this because you are set apart. Do this because I have chosen you. Do this because you're set apart to a holy God. Do this because God has chosen you. Do this because out of all the people in the earth, he looked at you and he says, yes, even though my daughter was in darkness, yes, even though she was wrapped up and caught up and, and snagged up, and even though she was used to be a, a person that was so always down and in depressed, and even though she was a person who was promiscuous, and even though she was a person, even though all this kind of stuff right here, God said, I chose you. I chose her. Even though she doesn't think she's worthy of being chosen. God said, I chose you. But he says, you got you to gotta recognize that when I chose you, I chose you to be set apart. Now understand, he didn't say he chose you to be better. He didn't choose us to be better, but he chose us to be set apart. Set apart. And we have to be careful, right? that we don't diminish the fact that God has set us apart by connecting and reconnecting with things that are beneath where God is trying to take us to. Again, it's not that we're better, but God is, is he's taking us to a new place in our minds. So our thinking has to be renewed, it has to be changed. Our desires have to change. And our thinking and our desires, they're affected by who we're connected to, right? And so God says, listen, you've got to do whatever is necessary to guard the fact that I chose you. you got to do whatever is necessary to guard the fact that I have chosen you to be my personal treasure. 
God says you got to do whatever is necessary. And listen, it's, it's not, you know, we just have to get to the place that we just, we own it. Somebody say, I, I, need, to, I need to own it. Um, being set apart often means walking a lonely road. That's just real talk, you know. Sometimes being set apart means you can't go back and reconnect with people that they may not be bad people, but they're just not people of the new season. So being set apart, as much of it, it is a, um, it's a gift. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's an honor to be set apart, to be chosen by God. But how many of you know that when you're chosen, you can't just, you can't just do anything and say anything and be with just anybody, right? That there is a, there is a standard. I saw that in the, I saw that in the chat, that there is a standard that he's calling us to uphold. And that's right, Sister Veronica, we need to own it. Own it. If you, if you fight against it, then you're going to make life difficult for yourself. If you fight against it, you're going to delay your own advancement. You're going to delay your own progress. You're going to delay your own growth. Right? Accept it. Own it. It is an honor and a responsibility. That's right, Sister Jeanette. But we got to do whatever is necessary, like you said, Bridget. So it is my prayer that you recognize today. And listen, recognizing that we're set apart does mean changing a mindset that we have. You know, some of us don't recognize the incredible value and strength and uh, giftings and things that God, as a matter of fact, can I tell you, you know, for some of you, the very thing that you think disqualifies you from being set apart is, is actually what qualifies you. You know what I'm saying? All that you have been through, good, bad, and ugly, all the, even the mistakes you've made, the lessons you've learned, this is exactly why God chose you. This is exactly why he wants to use you. Because there are others out there that need to know that God will still choose them even though they feel like they've messed up. But you got to get it right about yourself first. Before I could really come out here and begin to minister and even minister on live and minister to others, I had to own it. I had to go, okay, and God has chosen you. You are set apart. And again, it doesn't make me better, but it makes me recognize that I can do better. It makes me recognize I can be better. And that's what I'm saying to you this morning. God has it for you to do better. God has it for you to be better. But it starts with you recognizing that you are chosen. And you didn't choose God. He chose you. <laughs> Contrary to what some of us, oh, yeah, I chose God. No, God chose you. Even before you even know that it knew that there was a, a choosing process. God chose you. And when he chose you, he put something powerful, something special inside of you. Some of us have been sitting on it and we don't realize it, but I'm here to tell you, God has placed something powerful in you. And like I said earlier, he's coming back for the return on his investment. And we need to be ready. We need to be prepared. We need to be yielded. We need to be uh, willing. We need to be, you know, we need to be rolling with them and not fighting against it. You know, not feeling like you're unworthy, not feeling like we, we just, we need to be ready for when God says it's go time. And I just believe deep in my spirit for some of you that I'm looking at you, it's go time. You've been sitting for too long. You've been compromising for too long. You have been uh, kind of hanging in the shadows for too long. You, you've, been, you've been kind of playing one foot in and one foot out for too long. Yeah, God is coming for you. He's coming for you. He's coming for me. You understand? This, this, is, this is what this message is. God is telling you he has chosen you. There's something he has put in you and he is coming for it. He's coming for you. He's coming because he's, he's ready. It's time for you to go to a new level. It's time for you to go to that next phase. It's time for you to close the door on some things because there's a new door about to be open. And as long as you are still stuck in the old door, you're not going to recognize the new door. So God wants me to tell you he has chosen you. He has chosen you for an incredible purpose. He has chosen you to do something amazing. He's chosen you to do something very special. And he's ready for you. <laughs> so just say, God, help me to be ready.
Help me to be ready. Amen. Father God, we just thank you for this message this morning. I thank you, Father God, that it's just in my spirit deeply. You know, as I said earlier, I didn't preach much of it, but it's just in my spirit that there are some here on this live that they've been fighting, they've been hiding, they've been running. Uh, you know, they've not been completely cooperative with you. They have not been flexible, God, because we have to be flexible. You know, we can't feel like we think we know everything that you're going to do. and We can't be paint, put you in a box and put ourselves in a box. Father God, I just believe that in this hour, you are coming for your sons and your daughters. In this hour, you are looking to take us to new levels, to new heights. In this hour, you want us to be settled in our identity and our purpose in you, that we cannot be questioning our work. We cannot be questioning our value. We cannot be feeling insecure for what you want to do in and through us. We have to be settled, 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 settled in our spirit, settled in our heart, settled in our mind that you did choose us. It was not a mistake. It was not a misunderstanding. It was not a mishap. There are no misses when it comes to you, Father God. Everything you do is intentional. Everything you do is strategic. So even though we may have a past that we may think is colorful, may all those colors point to you, God. <laughs> Father God, let us yield ourselves to you today. As we look to wrap up this week and finish it strong, let, let us turn our eyes to you and say, okay, God, we're ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, God. We're ready, God. What do you have for us? What's this new thing? What's this next thing? Help us to be ready, God. Help us to not look to the left or to the right. Help us to take our eyes off of people and put our gaze, our fix on you who chose us to be your treasure. Thank you, God. That is so beautiful. Thank you for choosing us out of all the people in the earth. Father God, I speak your continued blessings in your favor to go before your sons and daughters under the sound of my voice. Bless them as far as the east is from the west. Wherever they're listening from today, Father God, all around the world, bless them, keep them, prepare them, develop them. Father God, use them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Amen, y'all. Wow, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. I was just looking at the comments. That's right, Sister Sandy. We are ready. I need somebody to say that I'm ready. By faith, just decree and declare and say, I am ready. By faith, I'm ready. By faith, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for whatever God has. I'm ready for whatever God wants. Amen. I love you all. Yep. Have a blessed weekend. Have an incredible weekend. If you need to get rest, get some rest. If you need to get some things done, be productive. If you need to spend some more intimate time with God, spend that time with God. If you need to reconnect with some.